Hope that's good. Welcome back to Ever Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Ever Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Johnny Capahala Back on Board. Johnny Capahala Back on Board is a 2007 Disney Channel original movie and it's about Johnny Capahala getting back to Hawaii and trying to build a relationship with his younger soon-to-be uncle. It's directed by Eric Bross, cinematography by Horatio Marquinez, editing by Terry Blythe, music by Nathan Wang, and it's written by Ann Austin, Annie DeYoung, Douglas Sloan and Max Sansko. The film stars Brandon Baker as Johnny Kapahala, Jake T. Austin as Chris, Carrie Hiroyuki Tagawa as Grandpa Johnny, Robin Lively as Carla, and Rose McIver as Val. The film was shot in New Zealand, which kind of makes Rose McIver make sense, because isn't she from New Zealand? It looks fine. I don't have any problems. There are a lot of filters and a lot of other stuff, but I mean, it's fine. It looks fine. The dirtboard compilation edits are so extreme compared to the rest of everything that's going on in the movie. They have filters, they have flashes, they have like different looks. They're cutting in and out. They're really trippy. It was giving me like Bill Nye the Science Guy. <laughs> like it's just all over the place and was a totally different vibe than like the story side of things that were going on, which like isn't a bad thing. It was just like weird. There wasn't a ton of music, which was actually kind of weird. I feel like um, they kind of sometimes can be blanketed, but Jonas Brothers' Hold On was in this, which I never knew and would have never expected. The opening? No, just no. And then I thought it was gonna be about surfing again, and it's about dirt boarding? Stupid. Also, there are way too many people in this movie that are like awful, creepy, and irredeemable. And one of them is supposed to be like a main character you're rooting for that, no, I'll get there, hang on. First, super creepy dude, the worst, by far and away, Troy. Dude gives the biggest pedo creep, take advantage of kid vibes I have ever seen ever in a Disney Channel original movie. Ugh, I hate him, he's the worst. Then he's got his little minion, Jared, who gives major creep vibes, especially when he's talking to a 12 year old and he's easily like 16 or 17. like. You're also a little creep and you're like this little like minion and I hated him. The movie's got terrible dialogue. It's a story that's all over the place. Lest we not even touch on the fact that his soon to be step grandma is so not old enough to be his grandmother. And I am so confused. And then she has a 12 year old son who's gonna be his uncle. Like, let's not even touch on that. Okay, I don't wanna know what their age difference is. Not that the age difference necessarily matters, but it is weird to go that way with the story. Like do something else that he's taking, like mentoring some kid. Chris takes way too long to show any kind of irredeemable or redeemable quality. He is so irredeemable and such a brat. And I get that he's 12, but oh my God, by the end of this movie, when he finally does like flip his script and it's like, just kidding. I want my mom to marry your grandpa. And I'm sorry for how awful I'm being. I literally was like, I don't care, get out of my face. Like I hate you as a character. He was just so awful for so much of it. And I get, again, he's a 12 year old kid. It's gonna be hard, but like get it together. Like, I don't know. It was, he was just so awful. He only flips in like the last 10 minutes. Speaking of that, this movie feels like an eternity. Okay, it felt almost longer than Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End, which is insane because that movie is close to three hours and felt like a million. So for this to feel like it could have been three hours is crazy to me. This was so awful. And then screw the dirt devil, dust devils, whatever they're freaking called, for how they treat Chris and peer pressure him into doing something so dangerous and then he breaks his freaking arm. Like what kind of stupid freaking teenagers are you that you would want to pick on a 12 year old? Like get over yourselves. I hate it so much. Carla's was like an awesome mom though when she decides to go like choose her kid instead of the marriage. I know that that's like, you know, whatever. She should be able to be happy, blah, blah, blah. But then she does end up happy, whatever. But like for her to choose her kid is. Um, also so random and so unnecessary, but there are like two specific moments where Johnny and his friend like ogle, gr like ogle girls and then they like hold up 
bikinis that are brand new and never been worn are like, ooh. And I'm like, what, what is the point of this? It had nothing to do with story. Icky. Brandon Baker is a freaking man in this movie. He is so grown up compared to the first one. I feel like this might be the biggest gap between Disney Channel original movie sequels, no? It's gotta be. It's been a fracking minute since Johnny Capahala. Dude, it's, he's grown. Robin Lively being back? You guys, for those who don't know, she was in the not quite human Disney television movie series. And those were so good. And I love Robin Lively, and she was excellent in this, by the way. And then Rose McIver? Huh? And Rose McIver was very good in this, and I've seen her and stuff like, I'm not a big fan of her in iZombie. I think she does kind of not the greatest job. But she was excellent in this. She was in a YouTube skit called The Dinner Party that I love and adore very much. It's one of my faves. Favorite part? I don't think I have one. Maybe the skate park. I don't, it's just, no. And then least favorite part? All of it. I hate everything. All of it. All of it. Uh, would I watch it again? No. Would I recommend it? No. Live your life. Watch the first one. You're done. Okay? That's it. All good things. Um, specific moments. Giving him crap for wanting to wear helmet and pads, like protective equipment, when they are all also wearing protective equipment. I didn't get that. Um, when they trash the store. The romantic Hawaiian music at the end, like so weird. Um, the age difference, it's just like, I don't understand. Like, I don't know what the age difference is. Not that necessarily an age difference matters, but it just is a weird situation for the writers to choose, you know? Strange. This is just, it's not it, man. I'm not against him getting like a little brother character that he has to mentor. Like, I'm not against that idea and concept. But it takes a thousand years and his little brother mentor concept is so awful. He's terrible. I hate him. I hate him. Um, I think Johnny, though, was great. I think Johnny was like a great role model and character throughout this whole movie. He didn't really have to do any growing, which was good for him, I guess. Um, so when, yeah, so when, you know, Chris finally flipped, I was like, yeah, I don't care. Good for you. I'm glad you let, are letting your mom be happy. That's everything I have for Johnny Capahala back on board. Uh, my final rating is five dirt boards, I guess, out of 10. Our total movie count is. Parent, dad, total, and crack count are still the same. If you want to keep up with the movie watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter. You'll find out what movie watching when. I put out videos every Monday or Friday and sometimes Wednesday. Join Patreon. Got a tier starting at just $1 where you can get uh, a video, all the videos a week early, sorry, or a coupon code for merch. Got tiers above that that are uh, daily trivia, bonus content, and all that fun stuff. Buy merch. Merch is great. Merch is grand. Until next time, comment, like, and subscribe, and I'm not in charge of your life. You are, so do you, and don't be Troy and Jared about it. Okay, film stars Brandon Baker's Johnny. Have a holla.